All right, welcome back to discrete math structures. This is lesson eight. We're going to be talking about modular exponentiation. So why are we discussing this? Well, it allows us to evaluate um, a to the b mod d, where a and b and d are all integers. And this is typically used in cryptography, for example, RSA and Elgamal, two very popular public key crypto systems. So uh, there are a few ways we can do this. We can use brute force, factoring, the memory efficient or iterative method, successive squaring, or general fast exponentiation. And these are all pretty much interrelated. So the brute force approach is the naive approach, and we simply calculate a to the b and then reduce mod d. Well, this is quite difficult um, when the exponents are large, but it works simply uh, when the exponent and base are small. So for example, 3 to the 3 mod 5 is going to be 27 mod 5, which is 2. But if, they get, if the exponent gets bigger, it takes longer, and you can run out of memory. So 3 to the 1024 mod 5 is going to be huge, right? That's a 489-digit uh, number in decimal, and there are only about uh, 10 to the 80 atoms in the universe, so it's going to be pretty much impossible to calculate that. So um, you can try more sophisticated ways of, fact of um, doing this exponentiation. So here's one way, which is factoring. So if we can factor the exponent, especially if they're small factors, um, this can be very useful. So let's say the exponent is an integer e, and it factors into x, y, and z. Then a to the e is equal to a to the x, y, z, which is then equal to a to the x to the y to the z. So if we evaluate uh, 14 to the 105 mod 5, it's simply going to be uh, 14 to the 3rd to the 5th to the 7th, uh, modulo 5, since 105 is 3 times 5 times 7. So uh, 14 to the 3rd is going to be 2,744, which is 4 mod 5. Now we can take this number, which is, we can take 4, which is equivalent to 14 to the 3rd, and we can raise that to the 5th power, as we see here, and we're going to get 1024, which is 4 mod 5. Again, we can use this 4 mod 5 result um, over here and raise that to the 7th power. And we're going to get 16,384, which is 4 mod 5. Thus, 14 to the 105 is going to be 4 mod 5. And note that this is not really the best example, since 14 is equivalent to negative 1, right? So um, negative 1 to an odd power is going to be negative 1, right? And then for also, uh, you could also consider uh, negative 1 to an even power is just going to be 1. So kind of a bad example, but it's also a shortcut that you can know. And you'll see some of these patterns arise as you do more of these. So the next uh, method I'm going to talk about is the memory efficient or iterative method. And we simply multiply by the base each time and reduce. So here's this little example. Let's find 3 to the 7th mod 5. Well, 3 mod 5 is going to be 3, right? So we don't need to calculate that. Uh, 3 squared mod 5 is going to be 3 times 3, or 9 mod 5, which is 4. We have that pretty easily. Uh, 3 cubed is going to be 3 squared times 3, but keep in mind that 3 squared is actually 4 from this relationship right here. So we can do a little substitution and get um, 3 cubed is going to be 4 times 3 which is going to be equivalent to 12, which is 2, mod 5. We can use this value of 3 cubed in our computation of 3 to the 4th, and we'll see that 2 times 3 is 6, which is 1, mod 5. And then we simply repeat this process, with the exponents getting incrementally larger by 1 each time, until we get to uh, 3 to the 7th, which is 2, mod 5, and that's our answer. So the next method I'm going to talk about is successive squaring, and it's useful if the exponent is a power of 2. So for example, find 3 to the 128 mod 7. Well, first we start out with 3 squared mod 7, which is 9, mod 7, which is 2. Right? Now let's try to find 3 to the 4th mod 7. Well, that's going to be 9 squared mod 7, which is 81 mod 7, which is 4. Alright, let's find 3 to the 8th now. Well, that's going to be 
4 squared, right? Because we just backwards substituting um, 4, 3 to the 4th, right? And then we're going to square it. And then we multiply the exponents. So that'll give us 3 to the 8th, and which is actually going to be 2. And then we repeat this process, doing our substitutions and just squaring the result. And we'll notice this little pattern here of 4s and 2s. And we'll see that 3 to the 128 mod 7 is 2. Again, this is just a convenient pattern. Uh, this wasn't intended to be that way. It's not always like this. But uh, just something to note. So the last way I'm going to discuss is the fast exponentiation method, which is most commonly used. So this is the algorithm in a nutshell. We find the binary expansion of the exponent. Then we write the exponent as the sum of its binary terms. Then we express the original exponentiation in terms of the sum. And then we compute the factors uh, reduced by the modulus. And then we simply multiply the result together, reducing whenever possible. So here's an example of this fast exponentiation. So let's try to find 3 to the 133 mod 7. Well, let's keep in mind that 133 is a decimal number, so base 10. And we can write this as a binary number as 1000101, which is equivalent to 128 plus 4 plus 1. And I have a video on converting to binary. Uh, the link will be in the description. So we see that 3 to the 133 is going to be equivalent to 3 to the 128 plus 4 plus 1. But because we can multiply, when we multiply numbers of the same base, we can add the exponents. Uh, we can note that this is equivalent to 3 to the 128 times 3 to the 4th times 3. So from the successive squaring slide from a few slides ago, uh, we can re recall that 3 to the 128 is equivalent to 2 mod 7, and then 3 to the 4th is equivalent to 4 mod 7. So uh, we can simply do some substitution. So we can plug in 2 uh, over here, right? And we can plug in 4 over here. And we can leave 3 how it is because it's a small number. And then we can simply evaluate 2 times 4 times 3, which is 24, which is equivalent to 3 mod 7. Thus, 3 to the 133 mod 7 is going to be 3. So that's it. Thanks for watching.